Hydrogen in the world of plants is a fertilizer, and more specifically, it's a fertilizer that also actually affects your soil pH, which means it affects the uptake of all the other nutrients that plants need to thrive and survive. So today's video of the 17 Essential Nutrients, the series, we're gonna be talking about hydrogen, how to increase the uptake, whether you want to increase the uptake or not, and everything else in between. So let's get into it. Hydrogen is uptake in one way, and that is, of course, via H2O, if you did not guess. Now, before we get into pH in hydrogen, let's talk about the other factors that hydrogen affects when it comes to your plants. Number one is actually your flowering time. And this is an interesting tidbit that I constantly use in my own personal garden. And that is the fact that when you restrict water, when you restrict hydrogen, what ends up happening is your plant gets stressed out. When the plant gets stressed out, it begins to trigger the thought process of, hey, I need to procreate, otherwise I'm gonna get eliminated from the genetic pool. And they actually begin to flower. So oftentimes I will restrict hydrogen to say, cause a pepper to a flower earlier than what it normally would because my climate has a shorter growing season. This can work in an indoor setting. It can work in an outdoor setting. It even works with house plants. For example, orchids, Thanksgiving or Christmas cacti. These are great plants where if you starve the plant of hydrogen, of water, what ends up happening is you end up triggering a flower cycle. So that's number one. Next up is that it's responsible for stress resistance. And when I say this, I mean a number of different ambient factors from the heat stress to sun stress to micronutrient stress. The proper level of H2O, of hydrogen, actually helps mitigate these factors. If you have too much, you end up stressing the plant. If you don't have enough, you obviously also also cause the plant stress. So that one is a little bit of a balance, but definitely crucial. And we're gonna talk about other nutrients that actually are stress reducing that you would want to utilize in the event that you're transplanting or potting up a plant, you wanna reduce transplant shock. But water definitely needs to be present to reduce the stress of transplant shock. And I continually mention when we get to the springtime and we're transplanting outdoors, that that first week, don't be afraid to water every second day, every day if needed, until you notice that the plant is feeling a little bit better about its space, and then you can back off. The reason is because it is able to reduce the stress on the plant. Next one is actually post harvest ripening. This one is commonly seen. I see it in tomatoes. I see it in peppers. Um, sometimes you see it in various different fruits, but ultimately what this is speaking to is again, the restriction of water and how the restriction of water can actually help the plant mature at an appropriate speed or time frame. When you continually apply water, what tends to happen is it will delay the ultimate ripening of that fruit or vegetable. And this even goes for grains, for example. So when a field is under irrigation, we oftentimes see people cut off the taps for this purpose. In your garden yourself, you may notice when you cut back on watering or you start getting a little bit lazier towards the end of the year, things start ripening a little bit quicker. This is all because a restriction in hydrogen can actually pull that plant back into a, a tighter time frame for when it actually chooses to ripen. But if too much hydrogen is present, it actually can delay it and push it out farther and farther. Now, the last one is actually your microbial community. And I've spoken about this in the video that I did on microbes. And one thing I did mention was the biofilm and the fact that H2O has to be present in order for microbes to thrive and survive. I also mentioned this when we were talking about compost tea, for example. In order for microbes to be happy, they need water. And now water comes in two forms, oxygenated and unoxygenated. And when it's oxygenated, you get a certain set of microbes. And when it's unoxygenated, you get a different set of microbes. You usually want the aerobic ones on this side of the pie. The ones on the other side very rarely are of a benefit for you. But regardless of where you sit, you need some water present if you allow your soil to completely dry out, then you are actually killing off your microbial communities. This even goes for your compost. If your compost dries out too much, you're killing off your microbial communities. So water in the system as a whole is incredibly important to your plant health, your soil health, 
and just overall the entire ecosystem. So let's get into hydrogen and your soil's pH. So if you did not know, there is a direct correlation with nutrient uptake and the level your pH is at. Your pH can increase the availability of a nutrient or it can decrease the availability of a nutrient. In the case of micronutrients, an increased bioavailability may not be a good thing. It can cause toxicity. And on the other side, a restriction in uptake due to the pH not being in the right area, particularly for macronutrients, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it can have an opposite effect, obviously a bad effect. The way that this works is if you have a lot of hydrogen ions present in your soil, then you have a lower pH. If you have fewer hydrogen items, you have a higher pH. So alkaline, less hydrogen, acidic, more hydrogen. Now, the way that this works within your soil is that your parent material, your native soil, is gonna kind of sit at the space it's at based on, again, your parent material, the inputs into that soil. This can be changed, however, via fertilizer, for example. Say you're using a fertilizer that has ammonium in it, so nitrogen with the four hydrogens around it. This can then be converted into nitrite through bacteria. Now, once it's in the nitrite form, it has nitrogen with three oxygens surrounding it. However, the four hydrogens that were involved with ammonium are dropped and those are released into the soil. So you have more hydrogen ions present in the soil. Now this obviously can cause acidity. However, when the plant or the root uptakes the nutrients, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit in some of the other nutrients, in particular nitrogen um, video, when the nutrient is taken up, so the nitrite is taken up by the root, it releases an oxygen and a hydrogen kind of combined into the soil. And this is to kind of balance the positive and negative charges, the electrical charges between the plant's root and the soil itself. Now from there, you're going to collect a whole bunch of these oxygen hydrogen compounds that are negatively charged in the soil. And obviously, there's a lot of precursors to H2O in there, and they will combine to make H2O. At the end of the day, on a very base level, we could say for every molecule of ammonium, by the time it's done its entire cycle up into the plant, we have a remainder of one to two extra hydrogens left behind because remember the other two hydrogens are now being used by water. So that's like a very base level. There's obviously a lot of complexity to this, but that's just to give you an idea as to how ammonia or ammonium uh, nutrients can actually cause a lower pH or acidifying of your soil. And this means if you have an acidic soil, obviously you want to be careful. So just some fun facts. Now the opposite is true. If you have an alkaline soil and you are like, give me all the hydrogen you got, well, then you actually might want to use something that contains ammonium in it. The reason why this matters is because hydrogens have positive charges and your soil nutrients are made up of anions and cations and your root itself is actually negatively charged. And therefore, there is a balance that takes place between the magnet so that is soil and the magnet that is your root. And when this is out of balance, it is due to, for example, too many hydrogens, too many positives running around inside of your nutrient profile. And this can throw off so many different forms of nutrient uptake, such as passive or active. And I could do a whole video just on that factor. But keep in mind that every root has a charge. This is another fact I actually think you guys would find very interesting. So acid loving plants. We always hear about how there's a set of plants that love to be in more acidic soil, blueberries, azaleas, hydrangeas, whatever the case is. The reason for this is actually the root system. So you can argue that through evolution, these plants adapted to more acidic soils because that's the environments that they were exposed to. Regardless of the why on the roots being more well adjusted to um, a lower pH, the essential reason for why they now have to be in a lower pH is because they have less of a negative charge to them. So this lower negative charge has resulted in them having less of an affinity to the surrounding nutrients when the pH is higher. And pH is directly related to cation exchange capacity of a soil. 
Um, they definitely play off of each other pretty heavily. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in some of the other videos because the nutrients and cation exchange capacity actually go hand in hand a little bit better with ones that aren't necessarily hydrogen. But regardless of all of that, the idea here is that they can't survive well in higher pH soils solely because their roots aren't magnetic enough to grab nutrients out of that situation. So that is why we want a more acidic soil, something with more hydrogens in it to kind of help with this deficiency that they have in their physiology as a whole. So now say you have acid loving plants or say you have a soil that's acidic and you don't have acid loving plants and you need that pH to go up and you choose to use a fertilizer that has nitrite in it as a your nitrogen source. What will happen is essentially the nitrogen cycle. That nitrite over time will be played around with in regards to the microbes and the microbes will actually add some hydrogens to it. And this addition of hydrogens is actually pulling the hydrogens out of your soil solution. So the hydrogens that made that soil more acidic is now, they're now gone. They're a part of a molecular structure that has no effect on the pH until it's converted backwards again, which the nitrogen cycle actually does go both ways. So as you can imagine, in a saturated soil, a soil that's incredibly wet, we have higher levels of ammonium. So that's the nitrogen with the hydrogens on it. So say you use the, the fertilizer with nitrite on it, you ended up sucking up a whole bunch of hydrogens, and then the soil now is waterlogged and it just continues to stay in that state what happens is your soil pH will begin to creep up because you're removing the hydrogens from the mix. So that's something to think about if you have an acid loving plant and if you have or you have an acidic soil that you're trying to keep acidic or you don't want it to get more acidic and you actually want it to have the opposite effect, you do want to be very careful about the uh, nitrogen fertilizer that you are using. So just, yeah. I'm sorry if that was too nerdy for y'all. Now, if you want to learn more on how to actually adjust the soil pH so you can end up in the perfect range for your plants, then you want to check out this video right here. And that video down there is actually what Google says to watch. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.